a Toast Alive podcast, the most authentic, most organic podcast out here, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Dylan with one hand, sitting out, Jose the shooter. We're sitting next to a mother, business owner, entrepreneur, Miss Vanessa in the house, baby. Yes. <laughs> For the people that don't know, if you've seen us, uh, I want to say two episodes ago, we were sponsored for the first time ever by Drip IV, and now this is the owner. It's me, <laughs> here in the flesh. How are you doing? How's Good. Are you okay? Are you nervous? I'm good. I'm nervous. I think I just told you guys I'm a little nauseous. <laughs> My vomit. It, it happens. Yeah. Ah, it's okay. Just go that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if anybody's wondering if you hear any weights drop in, any excessive uh talking on the side it's because we are filming in drip iv's newest location in long beach california this is like this is so amazing this is so dope people are gonna start are gonna find out what it took to get here you know the emotions the journey Mm -hmm. like it's not easy to even open up one location but you are now on three 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 oh my goodness so before we get into that, we're going to take this a little bit back. Where did you grow up? Where are you from? Yeah, so I grew up in Ontario, California. Okay. My family's all from Whittier. Um, my mom and dad uh, had us at a super young age. They were probably 20, 21 when they had us, and my sisters are twins. My older sisters are twins, and um, they are 13 months older than me. So, yeah, so we're super close, um, and there's four of us total, so I have four sisters. Oh, we, damn. Yep, we grew up in Ontario and went to school out there, everything. After high school, I actually went to North Dakota, and I went to college out there in North what Dakota. The? <laughs> yeah. What's in North Dakota? At the time, nothing, but I also was, like, not my best, I would say, in mm. high school. I was, like party girl i was like let's what are we doing next oh. i totally really? was i totally looks was. are deceiving don't judge a book by its cover don't judge a book by its cover <laughs> yeah definitely so when i graduated from college i was like definitely in that stage like my parents ruined my life and i want to get as far as i can away from them <laughs> were they strict parents Um, I wouldn't say that they were strict. Um, like if we wanted to drink, my dad was like, okay, if you guys want to drink, drink in the house. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a party, throw it in the house. And so we did, I did. I would like (laughs) through three parties at my house. I had charging at the door. Yes, I did. Girls get in free before 10. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I had my friends as like a bouncer. Like it was it was crazy. High school was crazy. I was um, on cheer and dance my my entire okay. time. So I danced my entire life. Um, and I just was very outgoing. I mm. love to be around people. I love to make, like, people having fun. Like, that was my thing. It, like, fueled me. What Did any of your parties that, that you threw at home get, like, two out of hand? Yeah. Where you had to kick people out? Yeah. There was fights. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we should have been there. I mean, through a Halloween party, let me tell you that it was packed. Packed. It was like back my back door you couldn't even my backyard you couldn't even walk. And a fight broke out. Someone had smashed a bottle on someone else's head and my dad was just like, "That's it. Shut it down." Like it was oh, <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> Yes. Hey, bring it bring was it crazy. Bring it to a Mexican party, bro. Uh, That's normal. Hey, People start kick kick those people out. Go back to the party. Don't worry about it. Seriously, it was wild, but it was such a good time. Like honestly, in high school, I created a lot of memories, good and bad. Yeah. And I know that towards my senior year, it was definitely when I was like really pushing my parents. I'm the middle child, so I'll say that I was <laughs> I was definitely the the worst. Uh, You're the third one then. Right? Yeah, because my twins, and then me, yeah. and then my little sister. Yeah. So you went to high school with your older sister? I did, for a year. Mm-hmm, I did. And when I went there, I was like, oh, yeah, oh, you're, you're Monique and Melissa's little sister? And I'm like, yeah, you know, until I found myself. And then yeah. I was just like, boom, you know. Like, it's me. It's me. It's me. She was the party girl. She's the one who pushed the buttons. Like, Were you as confident in high school, like, throughout your whole, like, as, as you are now? Or was that, like, 
a uh, little timid, kind of, or like, did you find yourself in the party scene? And that created, like, a confidence boost. No, I feel like I was, I, I feel like a lot of people kind of gravitated towards me. Um, yeah. That In that aspect, I feel like that's always stayed the same. Mm. Like, I feel like I've always um, been very welcoming and accepting. And that's kind of how a lot of my friends that were my friends then are still my friends now. Wow. Um, so, I, yeah, I have actually a handful of them that I still talk to. Man, to that's crazy. Because yeah. me and Dylan Jose, we probably can't say that. Really? Having the same type of high school friends that we have now. Really? Right? Yeah. Really? That's crazy, huh? What? Yeah, the that's dynamic that we have is, like, so weird. And for the people that have listening in, we've talked, me and Dylan have talked about it. I coached Dylan in high school. No way. Because they were, like, three years, four years apart. Four. four. Uh, three going on four. Oh. And then Jose, I coached with him in football. Oh, shit. So the dynamic just kind of, like, switches, but... I think out of, like, high school, there's only mm, four or five actual, like, friends that I still have from there. Wow. Um, but it, it's all transitions, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it was definitely transitions. It depends on where they lead in life, depends on where we lead, we are in life mm-hmm. that, that ends up back in the same place. And yeah. I know some of us, like, we find out who are real friends until after high school yeah because like you go through life Mm -hmm. it's all ups and downs you went to north dakota that's like from cali to a complete different other type of state that's like totally different um so i do want to ask before we keep moving on and just kind of like briefly touch on it in high school what can you say was who were you then that you are now like the same like, who was I then? Mm-hmm. Like, is there a difference in in persona? Was there something that you lacked? Was there something that you were better at then or better at now? Um, I think I think then, back in high school, um, I was doing things without, like, an intention. Like, mm-hmm. I was just doing them to do them. And I really didn't have an intention, whether it was good or bad. And I think in some decisions that I made in high school that it did affect my life for a long time yeah. because of how and why I did things. And I was just reacting to react almost like I feel like my temper then was just top notch compared to now where now <laughs> I can just be like kind of brush things off. Like, you know, it's not that serious. Just move on. Or, or I don't respond to respond. Like, you know what I mean? Just because I want to have something to say. Yeah. Like back then I did. I was like, oh, I'm going to have the last word. Now I'm like, you have the last word. If it like helps you, you sleep at night, yeah. you have the like last word. You can word. have it. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, is it, you know, like people just, they want you to have a type of response. Yeah. They want to have that over you where mm-hmm. whatever issues they have and they bring it upon you or whatever uh, interaction you have with them, they want you to respond to their anger mm-hmm. and then let them all like, oh, yeah, I got her mad. Yeah. I got her mad. It's mm-hmm. like, nah, bro, it's different. Yeah. Definitely. Um, what I've been saying too recently is like no response is a response. Mm. I've been saying that so much recently and I feel like that's what's helped me calm down in so many situations. It's yeah. like, you know what? If I don't respond to this, I bet you that's going to impact them more than if I did say something. It goes in like the same thing where the quietest person is the loudest person. Yes. Yep, exactly. It, it's right. your confidence. It's mm-hmm. the way your aura, your energy, wherever you go, whatever energy you bring is what everybody's going to see exactly. without you even saying it firsthand. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm, we've, I've always talked about it where high school, it's even now me coaching high school. Like I tell her, I was like, yo, you got to find yourself. Mm-hmm. Who are you? What do you love about yourself? What can you get better? Mm-hmm. And f- there's a lot of people that just doubt their journey and, let themselves be the victim of what society is and what their family is going through. Yeah. I know it's tough. I know sometimes it gets really hard, but hey, you cannot let determine your family's issues and your family's life like span, like determine what your future is going to look like. Yeah. Because I know what we got into was nothing that we were prepared for earlier. Yeah. They didn't prepare us for this. No one, no one even knows what this is and still isn't. But we figured it out. And I tell everybody, he's like, yo, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Mm -hmm. You want to be a social media influencer? Go ahead. You want to be a trainer? Go ahead. You want to be doctor? Whatever it is. But as long as you want to be that, go ahead, man. Don't let somebody else's what they want for you be you. Yeah. Because down the line, you'll you'll hate them. Yeah, exactly. You'll regret it. Yeah. Man, I should have listened to myself. Yep, exactly. So when you were in North Dakota, Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. What's the transition there? What is what what do you learn about yourself there? Because no one wants to leave a safe home and a safe environment mm-hmm. to go to the unknown. Yeah, I did. Mm. I did. Yeah, I did. I was like, I didn't, I thought my parents were making all the wrong decisions for me. And I was like, I can do it on my own. Yeah. I can do it. So I was in North Dakota. I did get a scholarship and I did cheer out there. Um, I was part of the cheer team at my college. And I learned so much independence and I realized how much I need my mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? What, what was that like? Needing somebody. What is what is that like? I it, w- it was a reality check for me because I'm like, damn, my mom does my laundry. My mom d- goes gro- grocery shopping for me. My mom reminds me of things. Like, and over here when I'm in college and I was in dorms, I lived in my the dorms. Yeah. Um, I was doing everything by myself. I was like, damn, I need lunch today. I got to go do that. Like, you know. Did, did you trust your instinct of going that way and making those type of decisions? Uh, originally, I did because I was being prideful. Mm. So originally, yeah, I did. I was like, okay, I'll mm. survive. Like, I was, like, on survival mode. Did that work or didn't work? Um, I feel like there was benefits to it, definitely, because, um, like, even when I, my first year of college, I, I didn't have a car. I was strictly on campus. My dad said, if you're going to go over there, then what do you need a car for? You're on campus. You have food. And you have your classes, and what do you need a car for? And yeah. so I was literally on campus. I had to make friends. I had to uh, find my ways around. But that was all from, you know, me being in the survival mode. But I feel like I was able to do that because of that. Yeah. Um, so I kind of made my way that way. But then shortly after, I was like, okay, my parents are only giving me so much freedom over here. I think they opened and closed the door on that one. <laughs> The testosterone, energy, caffeine, you know, it helps out. Yeah. You, that, that's, like, one of the things about, like, what us, when we're younger, we don't understand, right, that sometimes our the advice that we get from not just our parents but from older older people, you know, it's for a reason. And, and the, I think the main thing that we don't understand is they're only telling us because of what they went through, but it doesn't mean, it does not mean that we have to – live that ourselves Mm -hmm. you may have gone through that but maybe my story may be different maybe my life is different Mm -hmm. and maybe if i make this decision that you made maybe it turns out different than me we're hard-headed i'm hard-headed i'd rather learn this shit myself yeah me i'd rather burn in the fire and i figured out myself how to crawl out of there yeah then you try to tell me what's going to happen before i do it yeah exactly and i mean we were just talking about this yesterday like i know i made that type of bad decision when i was younger Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I don't make the best decisions ever. I make decisions. I make mistakes. I am not perfect. But I can promise you I will be the best version of me as long as I'm trying myself. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not ready to live somebody else's life. Mm-hmm. I'm now in my truth. Yeah. And it just goes with chapters. Mm-hmm. chapters. We live through chapters in life where we close one chapter, we open a new one, and, and it's still being written. Like, we're still in a long journey of life. Yeah. We're literally, we're going from high school to college and transitioning into, like, who you are now. Mm -hmm. Finding your purpose, finding your path. In North Dakota, did you figure out that this is what you wanted to do? Open up a drip IV, get into this type of field where you're serving others? No. Mm. I had no idea. I Mm. honestly thought I was going to go to college for four or five years, whatever it took me, and then I was just going to have a career in a nine-to-five. I honestly thought that that's how my life was going to go. Were you going to be complacent at that point? I, I felt like I was. Yeah. I, I did. I was like, you know, I, I my mom does it. My mom's a nurse. She's She works um, at a hospital in Whittier, and she loves it. She loves it, and I see my mom's passion through it, so I was like, I'll be good. I can do that. You know, my mom's good. She she raised us, and yeah. she took care of us, and she seems happy, so I can do it. What does your dad do? My dad actually has a, uh, his own consulting business. So, yeah, he has um, multiple locations, and he's been a consultant, and that's kind of where I get my, my business side okay, from. Okay, so, so now I do got to tap in because, like I said yeah. before we started this, I wanted to make this episode into where the audience listening in, whether it's your audience, our audience, take something from this. So for your parents being well off, right? Because they worked their asses off to get there. Yeah. 
And for anybody wondering, like, just because your parents made it doesn't mean you're going to make it, right? You may have an advantage, but it's still up to you to make it out. Yeah. Was there a certain thing on you, like a, a pressure on your back, because your mom is a nurse, because your dad is successful, an entrepreneur, did you take that upon yourself, like, I got to be somebody? Or were you in denial of that, like, mm, now nah, I'm going to work this and I'll be fine? No, definitely. So my my dad, when like I said, my parents were young parents. So when my dad had my sisters and I, my dad was working three, four jobs. He didn't start off as a consultant. Mm. My dad drove limos. He drove ambulances. He was working a nine to five, and he was trying to get his master's in business. All while me and my sisters were like, in our first years. Yeah, my parents struggled. They struggled. They did. Yeah. And we didn't see that. I don't, I remember like we would go and do little events, but my, my dad would pull up in a limo and it was because he drove limos. So we <laughs> got like the hookups, but we thought that that was like dope, you yeah. know? And so like, I remember little parts like that, but my parents, like my mom, she didn't work her nursing career. Our first like five, six, seven years of life. She mm-hmm. had her degree, but she was at home taking care of us during the week. And then on the weekends, she would go and work her 12 hour shifts and we would stay home with my dad. God damn. And it wasn't until we were like in middle school, high school, where my parents' careers became solid. Mm -hmm. And we started getting bigger things. We started moving to a bigger house. We were able to do cheer, which cost like $2,000 for each of me and my sister. It's It's not cheap. No, it's not cheap. Soccer, all this stuff. And it's like you don't realize like all of the things that your parents do to to have you where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. So seeing my like my dad and my mom start off like that and then now where they're at, I feel like they also had higher expectations for me and my sisters because they're like, we went through that. We don't want you girls to go through that. So my dad was like so hard on all of us. Like, no, you're going to college. You're getting a degree. You're making well for you and your family. Like my dad was the one who was like really stuck on us. Yeah, like I busted my ass all those years. Yeah. Like it's not going to be for no reason. Yeah, no, exactly. And so like me and my sisters do. We all, we all have an education. My other sister's a nurse. Uh, my other sister's actually a PO in Riverside County. And my Fuck my yeah. other sister works for the state of North Dakota. So we all are doing very well. Um, but I think my dad and my mom knowing that, we wanted to make better for our families is there, too. Is there a downside to that type of pressure and that type of push? Um, yes, because you know what? My dad's voice is always in the back of my head. Mm. It's always in the back of my head. Like, am I making my dad proud? And I remember like the first time it was like in the midst of me even starting drip. Like my dad literally told me that he's like, Nessie, I'm proud of you. And like that for me, I was like, oh my God, like my dad said that to me, (laughs) you know? So like that felt like so rewarding. Like, okay, I'm doing something right. You know? So I feel like there could be downsides of it, but, like, thank you. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, thank you. Yeah, the, the people, some, you're one of the ones that, that took that type of pressure and made something out of it. Yeah. Because, right, the, the saying that goes is diamonds are made under pressure. Yeah. And when a parent or family or family is successful, man, you still, like, man, I love what, what our podcast has done here, there's still pieces of shit out there that don't do nothing. Right. They could be successful and they still waste that. Yeah. Right? We heard it. I heard it in, in, um, in one of the podcasts where if I get a million dollars, I could give my son a million. But if I don't teach him how to use that, he's going to run through it. Mm-hmm. He's not going to learn. What, so what my is, my million is, I'm going to teach my son what it is to go through life. And, yeah. you know, this might be happen, this might happen, whatever the case is. It's like, yo, because your parents were successful, it doesn't mean you will be. Mm-hmm. You have to put in the work. Yes. They can only help you so much out, whether it's financially, whether it's giving you advice. They can only help you so much until they let go of your hand, and now it's time for you to move on. Mm-hmm. And we go through this all the time, dude. Like, it's not easy. People, people think that because my dad is successful and has busted his ass, is I'm going to take what he's done. Like, my dad has a successful business. Mm -hmm. I work for him. We've built it. He's built it first. I've helped out. I tell everybody, say, bro, that's his baby. Mm -hmm. He knows what it is to, like, get it from the ground up and keep it stable and keep growing. I just know it from when it was up, and I can help out. Mm -hmm. I know now what it is to get some shit out of the floor because 
man, me, Dylan, Jose, and everybody with us will tell you, like, man, from the gutter up, like, we were not fucking around how we started this. Yeah. And now we're here. And so if you go back a year ago, two years ago, when we did start this, like, out of West Covina apartment. Yeah. Getting drunk at 12, 12 a.m., 1 a.m., going going ham. That's dope. And it, but it builds you. It builds you. And, it, and you got to make a decision at one point in your life where, do I want to keep going? Or am I going to give up now and just let this be a chapter in my life? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is, a, like, that's so, I'm glad you talked about that. I'm glad we brought that up because... Your parents busted their butt to get here. Mm-hmm. And then now you're going and opening Drip IV. Yeah. Your dad telling you I'm proud of you. Mm-hmm. Were you proud of yourself at that same moment he told you? Or were you still like, man, I'm not, I, I'm not there yet? No. I still, honestly, and I know this probably sounds bad, but I'm still not proud. Mm-hmm. I've, I'm like, I have so much to do. I'm mm-hmm. not there yet. And I, I feel like that fuels me. Because I'm like, I have so much planned for Drip. Like, I know that this we're coming up on two years, two years of Drip opening. And I'm like, I got a whole scroll of things that I want to do with this company. Wait, for, so for the people that this tuning in, what is Drip? What is Drip IV? <laughs> so Drip IV is IV hydration and vitamin injections. So we... So if you're drinking yeah. Happy Dad, you already know what we need after this, bro. <laughs> Sign me up right now. Sign me up. I yeah, and and like that's yes, it's for hangovers, but it's also There's so much, much more. more. So much more. We've helped. She told so us. She told ma- us. I did tell you guys. We have so many people with degenerative diseases. People with like ongoing fatigue from COVID um, that have gotten these bags and like it's changed them. It's changed how they go there about their day to day. It's helped, you know, inflammation. It's helped. Just so many other things that it's just like that. That's one of my reasons for doing it is I know that it's just more than a hangover. Man, so drip IV. There's much more than just the drip. More than the drip. What does that mean to you? What does your business name mean to you? Because when we tell you a toast of life, make sure you subscribe. <laughs> we could tell you what it means to us, and I talk about it passionately. I back it up like if it's a person. And how we talked about earlier, if it's time to, to get down for it, time to go to war for it, I'm ready because it's what it, we built. Yeah. What does Drip IV mean to you? Uh, so I know I have a product, and obviously I believe in the product, yeah. right? But Drip for me is is so much more than that in a sense that when I had my two younger kids, I was working hours at a time eight nine hours and in those hours my two little babies were in daycare the entire time the entire time there was times where I was stuck in traffic and I would call their daycare and be like can you just please hold on to them for 30 more minutes like I didn't have anybody to pick them up and like that was rough for me so I was like you know what this can't be my life like I'm I can't even take my daughter to dance because I'm too busy working like I'm missing out on all of my kids stuff because I'm too busy working like, how is this life? Yeah. And so for me, when I started Drip, I was like, it was a freedom thing for me. It was I wanted to free up my time so that I can watch my babies grow, so that if they needed me to pick them up from school, they had early dismissal, I was there. And I am there. Yeah. Every soccer game, every dance competition, whatever it was, it's like I'm there because of what I'm creating. And so for me, that's what I wanted to give back is I know that, like, during COVID, like, all, you know, nurses in general were just suffering. They weren't being homes with their with their family. They were st- staying the night in the hospitals. They were getting, you know, depression and anxiety from seeing people die left and right. And it was like, don't take the passion out of nursing. I didn't want that. Yeah. And for me, I did live through that. So I was like, you know what? I, I need freedom for not just me, but for the moms, the dads out there that have to drop their kids off at daycare eight nine hours a day like you shouldn't have to do that you should be able to make an income work when you want to work and still be financially stable to take care of your babies and be present with them and so drip for me is that it's so much more than our product like yes again i believe in it it does wonders it works but i want to create a space to where people can still make an income and be with their families that is the most important thing to me talk your shit hell yeah no that dude that was so like man i'm listening to this right now we're all listening to this but it's like 
unless you're in this, you'll understand it. You, yeah. Like, you really have to go through those ups and downs and you said dropping off your kids. Mm-hmm. Like, whether you have kids or not, bro, you, you have to understand that you need freedom at some point of your life. Yeah, you do. At, like, it, whether you're... Whether you have kids and you're missing time with your kids. But if you have family members that you're really close to, it's missing out on family parties and events and travel mm-hmm. because you got to go work. Right. I want to I be able to be everywhere I can be possibly mm-hmm. for as long as I'm alive. Yeah. For as long as I'm gifted to be waking up every day. That's, yeah. that's it. Mm-hmm. Whether I, I lose sleep, whether I'm stressed, whether I'm going, whatever. As long as I do this and I get to relax a little bit and enjoy those moments. Yeah. Like, there's nothing like it. Yeah. And I'm... That's so dope that you, you talk about that little process, and, and we're going to get into that because that journey that you had to go through as a parent and as a mother mm-hmm. where you weren't being around your kids and you couldn't go to events, some people just, oh, man, this this just happened, dude. It, it, we just talked about this. Someone had told us, like, you need the time with your kids. So if it's meaning work less on you, but you're there with your kids, then you're fine. Yeah. And he was present when I was having this conversation. I was like, no, dude, it's not that. Mm -hmm. It's not. I want to be around. I want to be there every single moment of my life to see them walk, crawl, talk, whatever they're doing. But if I don't do this right now, Mm -hmm. right now that there is time, I'm not going to do this later Mm -hmm. because it, it happens like everything else. If you miss this win- this window of opportunity and you let it slip by, you're not going to do it again. Right. You're just going to talk about, all oh, that one time I did have an opportunity. Yeah. No, fuck that. Mm-hmm. Do this shit now. Why not now? Or you're going to lose a little bit of sleep. Or yeah. people are going to miss you a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so what, bro? Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Do it now. Mm-hmm. You'll think yourself later. Mm-hmm. A year from now, three years from now, six months from now, a month from now, you will think yourself later that you started right now. Right now, yeah. Where? Cerritos. <laughs> All right, you good? Good. Um, perfect. All right, so talking about parents, talking about growing up still, high school, college, parents being this, transitioning to being a mother. Oh, man. Man. Having kids and tra- and becoming an entrepreneur and betting on yourself. Mm-hmm. How does that work? What is... For you, what it, what was that mentality that you had to set yourself in and put yourself in in order to, like, be here? Well, so from North Dakota, um, I actually came back after my year three. Oh. I didn't finish. That's I, right. Hell yeah. I, <laughs> I went. I, <laughs> Me either. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I have street. my nursing degree, but I'm like, I didn't finish out there. So Uh I came back. I had um, actually a good friend from high school. Uh, My grandpa and my uncle all passed away in a matter of months. Mm. And my aunt. All in a matter of months while I was out there. So it did something to me because I was, it wasn't like a quick flight. It was like two flights. It was a 28-hour drive. So it was like I didn't, I didn't have the access to my family. And at that point, I realized how much my family meant to me. And so I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I need to be home. So I decided to go home. And my dad told me, he said, if you're coming home, you're going right back into school. And you're not coming into my home for free. So you're going to get a job. Dude, right. my dad. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I did. I went right back into school. Well, month two into school, I found out I was pregnant. So, did yeah. Did you quit? No. I kept going, oh. and they wanted me to. I, I told my nursing program, and they said, well, just, just take it off. It's going to be easier. It'll be easier for you just to come back after the baby's born. And I said, no, I'm going to keep going. Man, talk of oh, my goodness. I kept going. That's some, I'm sorry to say, that's some bullshit, huh? I was pissed. <laughs> I was like, wait, did that's you just tell bullshit. me no? You told me no? Okay, that means yes. It's so crazy because when people, when, when you're going through a journey and people are like, yeah, we support you, and then there's like a mishap, instead of like, yo, we support you, whatever you need, but keep going, they're like, no, yeah. quit. Yeah. Take a break. Yeah, like I was going to ruin their ranking or something. Man, shut the I was, fuck yeah. up. Yeah, uh, like I was going to be the pregnant girl that dropped out of their college, you know? Yeah. Like, no, so I kept going, and in, in going to nursing school, I actually worked at Jack in the Box. Yes. I worked in Jack in the Box nursing school and being pregnant. 
Wow. Yeah. So I was doing that. And then um, I worked through Jack and Box my entire last year of nursing school. Um, I had my daughter on a Monday, went back to nursing school that following Monday. Yeah, my dad, while I was in the hospital giving birth to my daughter, my dad went to my school and picked up all my, my paperwork, picked up all my homework, and I did it. And I was only allowed to miss so many hours during nursing school. So that's why I didn't miss once. I was never late. I showed up to all my clinicals. I did everything that I needed to do. So that way I could take off those five days technically and then return. Talk about that. Talk about that that mindset that you need to have in order to fucking keep going. Honestly, like my daughter was the, the fuel to that. For sure, because I was like, I need to do this for her, yeah. but then I also need to do this for my dad. Mm. And I was like, I'm going to disappoint him. That goes back to like what we were talking about earlier. Like, I'm going to disappoint my dad. Like, here I coming back from college, begging my dad. He yeah. let me. And then I got fucking pregnant. But, <laughs> but talk about like that, that moment where we all have that moment where you can, you could just fucking quit. You could yeah. put it off to the side. You could wait for the perfect moment. Oh, you know what? This hiccup came. You know what? Fuck it. It is what it is. I can stop. Mm-hmm. But you didn't stop. No. Like, you got to give yourself credit. You yeah. you didn't stop, and you could have quit, and you had every reason to. Mm-hmm. But you didn't. Yeah. And what people don't understand is, like, yo, just because I had this doesn't mean now I'm going to quit. That mm-hmm. just means I got to push even more. Yeah. Now it means I have something on my back in, in order for me to keep pushing, whether I'm tired or not, whether I'm depressed or not, whether I'm fucking mad at the world or not. I got to keep going yeah this fucking thing does not stop for nobody no. or anybody Mm-mm. no so for you what was what was that moment in your life where you're just or that moment throughout your your pregnancy the birth whatever the case whatever moment it was where you're like man this is too tough honestly i think i don't feel like i had that like a moment mm. in there mm-hmm because I was on fight or flight mode. Like, I literally was just going. I was going. There Was I tired? Yeah, but it was like mind over matter So when someone point. told you to take a break, what would you say? No, I'm going to keep going. Sit down. I was in clinicals past my due date. I was 41 weeks in clinicals. And they said, sit down, Vanessa. You shouldn't be on your feet. I said, no. For what? I feel fine. And I was walking the halls. I was doing rounds. I was helping pass out meds. I was, into this. <laughs> I was literally, I was like, no, for what? Yeah. Like, I'm here. I'm going to be here. You know, and I didn't want them to have any reason to make me leave or to say, well, no, you didn't complete it. So now you have to drop out. It's like, no, I made it this far. I'm going to keep going. Yeah. So I did. And I went back and I finished nursing school and I was like, booyah. Drop the fucking Drop mic on them, motherfuckers. <laughs> Man, help. <laughs> Dude, let's do this. Yeah, you you ha- you have to feel at some point proud of yourself for keep for, yeah. for going. And I feel like I have those spurts of where I feel like I'm proud, and then I'm like, all right, next. Do they go away, right? Yeah. Like, you get that, like, hell yeah, I did it. Fucking on to the next now. Yep, they go away from me. There's, there's bigger, huh? Like, there's, there's bigger. There's There's more to this. There's so much more to this. Like, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I'm proud of it. Or, Vanessa, how'd you do that and all this stuff? I'm like, I don't know. I don't have the answer. Like, I honestly don't. I just feel like I did it because I had to. Because at now, at this point, there was people that were relying on me for life. And it was like, that was, like, so much bigger. That was, that was my motivation. Man. Did you, have a, like, did you ever have a moment with, like, when your daughter was, was a baby and you just, like, look at her and you take a moment? And yeah. be like, damn. Yeah, I, I do that now. I do that now because she's going on 10 in a few weeks. I'm going to be a mom for 10 years. And it just like, like she is an angel. And, it, and it, it scares me sometimes because I feel that some of my traits, which now I'm not the most proud of, go on her. Like the fight or flight. She... <laughs> Poor Angel, she is in competition gymnastics, and she her leg weights broke, and she didn't tell me. And she asked one of the teachers to borrow leg weights, and they let her borrow it. Without me, t- I didn't know she needed new ones. Well, then the next week, she was crying that she didn't want to go. And I said, Mommy, what's wrong? Why don't you want to go to gym? And she finally came out that her leg weights broke, that she had to borrow some from gym, but the ones that she borrowed, that she couldn't borrow anymore. 
And I was like, why didn't you tell me? And it like, for me, that moment kind of hit me hard. Like it was emotional for me because I'm like, did I teach my child just to fight or flight, figure it out on your own yeah. and not ask for help? Because that's what I do a lot. I just figure it out on my own. And I'm like, did I teach her that? So for me, like to watch her that, it like, it crushed me a little bit because yeah, it's like, yeah, I figured it out. My kids are good. I'm present, all this stuff. But some of the traits that I'm, you know, that I don't want to pass down, I kind of pass down to her in the midst of me trying to figure it out for them. Yeah. And I didn't realize that because she's the oldest. So it's like you have your little brothers and I'm just like, take care of them. Do this, Ayla. Well, why'd your brother do this? It's like I put so much on her and I didn't realize it until that moment two weeks ago. Yeah. And I'm like, shit, did I fuck up? Yeah. <laughs> you know? You have how many kids? Three. Three. You have your daughter is about to be 10. My son is eight. And then my baby is eight months. Eight months. Mm -hmm. All right. So... With having been just being a parent in general, being a mother, I think mothers are probably like one of the sacred things. Some of them, right? Because just as 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 fathers, like there's not everybody that's allowed to be a father. Right. Not everybody's allowed to be a mother, and they just they don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. But in this case, you've done everything possible in order to try to set yourself up for for better and for setting setting them up setting them up for better. When they come to you with some sort of doubt, some sort of self-doubt, having self-love issues, mm -hmm. what's that conversation look like? I embrace it 10 times more. Like my daughter, she has braces now. And when she first got her braces, she didn't want to smile. And she, I was like, Mommy, you look beautiful with braces. You know, I had braces. And I would kind of like tell her like, you know, how I kind of went through it. Like, just smile. You look beautiful. Or, like, compliment her more. Yeah. I'm like, Allie, you look beautiful, mommy. And she'll just, okay, you know, kind of thing. But the compliments, I, I, I'm doing them more and more often because I don't want her to feel like, like she's not beautiful. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, I'm, like, trying to compliment her more and more and more um, in, in that insecurity. What about, like, when someone, when they're, when they... Come to you, like, because as kids, as even young adults, all of them are always afraid to come to their parents and be like, hey, I'm, I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, did you ever have to go to your parents and tell them, hey, you're not okay? Or did they realize? I think um, I did once, and I was terrified. I was terrified to go to my mom. And I felt like I had no other option but to go to my mom. And that was actually when I was pregnant. Mm. And I was so scared. And I, she's like, you need to tell your dad. You need to tell your dad. And I was like, hell no. <laughs> hell no. I said, I you can, tell him. Can't tell that guy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you tell him. So she told him. And, oh, God, that conversation was rough. It was rough for sure. But I, I don't want to, my kids to be like me. I don't want them to wait until last minute where they don't have any other option. Um, I want that relationship to to be open. Yeah. And so, like, with them, I talk to them about everything that's going on, the stupid fentanyl and the candy, like, stuff like that. I tell them first. I showed them. I literally Googled it and showed them pictures. And, yes, they were, they're 9 and 8, but I'm like, I would rather them hear it from me than be misinformed by another 8 and 9-year-old from whatever they hear on YouTube or whatever is going on in their home. Wow. I would rather them hear that from me. Facts. And so with that, I'm like, open. If I see something on Instagram or whatever, I tell my kids first. Yeah. And I'm like, nope, this is what it is. And if you have questions about it, you tell me. Yeah, no, it, it's one of those things is, is being able to learn about life and be able to pass that on. Yeah. And pass it on to whether you're – your kids, your loved ones, your cousins, your family, your friends. That's that's just the way it is. But to my point is, when you're going through something, it's always okay to ask for help. Yeah. What is not okay, what I feel like is not okay, is just to give up and throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. Because, man, if you throw in the towel now, what if you would have made it out? Mm -hmm. What if you fighting, whatever you're going through, helps you out throughout your life? Yeah. Builds you to better and lets you tell that story to somebody else that's going through it. Yeah. A lot of people can't. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have have had issues or problems or they're 
voice in their head spoke way too loud and they just didn't survive and yeah. and it happens it does it's it, sadly it's it's a normal thing that it's in the youth a lot and also young adults but that's why we're here to to speak upon this, and even parents. Yeah. Because as parents, you get a lot of pressure. Yeah. Be you do. be this for your kids. Be better for your kids. Be that for your kids. Be this. Be that. And what some people forget, and this is why I love saying this, and what I love, what do we do? Is what about us? Yeah. What about me? Mm -hmm. What how, what about how I feel? Mm -hmm. How do? Am I okay? Mm -hmm. Do you care if I'm okay? Well, you know what? I care. I care if I'm okay, and I got to work on me. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not, I got to work on me. Yeah. And if you, everybody always has pointers of how to parent. Yeah. Motherfucker, this ain't your kid. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker, <laughs> this ain't, up. this isn't your family, bro. Shut the fuck. Mm -hmm. Be on your lane. Stay, we said it just like two weeks ago or last week. It's always a lot better to stay in your lane. Yeah, it is. Don't go into somebody else's. Don't maneuver into somebody else's. Don't look over to somebody else's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because your lane is always clear and it's yours. Yeah. However you want to go through it, whether it's obstacles, whether it's speed bumps, whatever it is, you know how to maneuver through it, mm -hmm. right? You could be one of those uh, lower ass cars and go to the side, take it safe, or just be a fucking truck and just run right through that motherfucker. Yeah. It is what it is, however you do it. But to my point is, as parents, no one cares about how a parent feels. They only care about how your parents feel. Mm. God, I love that so much. <laughs> they only wow. care about how you're parenting, not yeah. about how a parent feels. Yeah. And sometimes uh, as parents, and even, um, I'll put this out there, even for the uncles and aunts that take care of their nieces and nephews because it's mandatory, right. they don't care about how they feel. Yes. And even though if they personally don't have kids, they feel like that, that kid is theirs. Mm -hmm. Right? So now we're here, we're going to shed light on this. How do you feel? How what did, what did this what was like? How do you feel with everything you're doing? Like it people don't understand like in order unless you ask us, mm -hmm. I will tell you. Yeah. Unless you ask me how I'm doing, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't ask how I'm doing personally, I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. Because I know that's I you don't even care. Yeah. You just give a fuck about what I what I'm doing. Yeah. How are the kids cool. Okay. What about me, bro? Yeah. Right? And it's like, why do I got to fight for you? Why, why do I have to put up a fight for you to ask how I'm doing? Nah, never mind. I don't got to. Yeah. And, I, and I'll say, too, is that when I had my, my younger ones, um, I went through depression. And that's when me and their dad weren't together anymore. And I was, you know, trying to do everything on my own, and I just fell into depression because I was filling up my kids' cups so much that I didn't realize mine was completely empty. And I was literally, like, numb. I became numb. I didn't do anything for myself. I didn't work out. I didn't go out. I didn't have time. And I was like, it's okay because I'm with my kids. It wasn't okay. Yeah. And someone told me something, and it literally resonates with me, and I tell anybody who goes through my anything that I ever had to go through, and I tell them, like, how do you take care of your kids if you can't even take care of yourself? And they told me that, and it was just, like, life-changing for me. That's crazy, because we say the same shit, too, all the time. Yeah, like, I can't tell these two guys that, like, yo, I'm going to take care of you, but I got you. Mm -hmm. And motherfucker, I'm not even doing this shit to myself. Mm -hmm. So I tell people, be selfish. Be selfish. You have to be There's selfish. nothing wrong with being selfish. No, and I nothing. learned that. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Self-care mm -hmm. is not being selfish. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And take it however you want. Mm -hmm. And to some people, it's like, nah, bro, that's that's not the way you're supposed to think. How the fuck are you going to tell me how I'm supposed to think? Like, this is what works for me. Because when you go through depression, when you go through anxiety, and you go through self-doubt and all that type of stuff, what people don't know is sometimes you just go on autopilot. Yeah, that's how I was. And it's just Monday through Monday, you're just waking yeah. up, doing whatever you got to do in order to survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until you have, like, that moment where you just, like, you go away from everybody. Mm -hmm. And then everybody's like, damn, where the fuck you go? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Now people are, wor are worrying. They're worried. Now because you went away, people are like, where are you? Are you doing good? It's like, man, I haven't been doing good for X amount of time. Why do you care now that I'm, that I'm gone? Why do you care now that I'm away from your life? Mm -hmm. 
So we've never been a we've now we've never been scared to walk away from people. Yeah. Like I don't care who you think you are. I'm I I don't need to be there. Yeah, and that's that's how I am now too. Is like the energy if it's just there, if it's not matched, like you're draining me. You're emptying my cup. You know, like you don't have permission to do that. Yeah. So you got to go. And like that like exactly what you said is like I have to take care of myself and the things that I thought were selfish now I'm doing it all the time oh you best believe it if we all go to dinner and mommy wants little mommy juice she's gonna do it with my kids right at the damn table you know what because (laughs) I'm like if I'm not happy how are you gonna be happy yeah you know, so stuff like that where I would go and I'd be like, I can't have a little drink because my kids are here, you yeah. know, or no nope, people are going to judge me. Judge me. My kid watched Miss Rachel two hours yesterday, or the other day because I was fucking <laughs> exhausted. So judge me. <laughs> you yes. know, it's like, I don't even care. This is what feels me. This is what makes me happy in order to provide for my family, provide for my kids. So I'm going to do it. And we're going to roll through it. And, and we're, we're going <laughs> to go through it. We're going to do whatever we need to do. That's the thing that people don't understand is that, yo, you need to do whatever works for you. Exactly. Point blank, however you look at it, the way, what, however you hear it, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. Mm-hmm. But if it works for me, then don't, don't hang me on this mm-hmm. because I, this is me, bro. It, mm-hmm. it, like, we've gone through whatever, like, everything. Mm-hmm. Self-doubt. We've gone through depression. We've gone through anxiety. We still go through it. We, yeah. But we maneuver the way, however we got to maneuver. Yeah. Transitioning because it's about you. Transitioning into being into the business owner now, business mindset. Mm-hmm. For this specifically for women, right? Because when a woman is powerful in what she does on her own, it's scary for a lot of men. Yes. Oh man, she don't need no man. <laughs> man, she's stuck up. Oh man, she's this, she's that. Like, hey, bro, like she just has her bread up, dog. What yeah. are you tripping about? Yeah. What kind of things have you had to encounter for being a strong and independent woman? I feel like in previous relationships, like, that was the issue, Mm -hmm. was that I was too dominant. And it was, like, me trying to be like that took away from them, and I would belittle myself to try to fit that Um, until I met the right person where it was, like, no we're equal and he allows me to be like that if we go out and he goes you know what she likes to get a little crazy at the club he lets me (laughs) if you know what he lets me literally if she has a business idea he lets me and if it's like better than his he's like yeah that's actually great he lets me it's like Mm. you have to find the the equal or else you're not going to work out you're always going to feel little you're always going to feel little it sounds like we're going to go find this out by ourselves now. <laughs> so to to find, so you, do you think it's hard to find a relationship in being an entrepreneur? Totally. Because a lot of people don't understand. Or if you're not at that same level or if you don't meet somebody who's secure in who they are, then for them, you become a drag. You become yeah. like, oh, well, she's always working. Or she doesn't have time for yeah, me. Yeah, she never has time for me. And it's like, I don't want to sit on your couch. I don't want to watch Netflix. I want to go meet people and market with people and grow. That's what I want to do. Facts. Like, <laughs> I don't have time to sit here and, you know, let's, let's watch Netflix at night. No, let's go to dinner with people who are richer than us so we can learn from them. Let's yeah. go do that. <laughs> Hey, don't, like don't get, don't get it wrong don't get it twisted like you can always have these moments totally but it's like bro like if you're doing that every weekend yeah if you're doing that every weekend and you're not around people that are better than you that are that are doing more than you like bro what are you doing, what are you doing? who's in your phone contacts that you can reach that has more than you right exactly. right if you're the one that has the most then we got to kind of switch it up a little bit right yes exactly because uh there's i think we've all heard it i know i've heard it i i'd rather be the dumbest person in the room to learn from everybody else yeah mm-hmm. and Same. i'd rather not be the biggest person in the room because i want to learn from everybody else yeah there's always room for growth always. right so but to the point to this was like because right now in, in where the world is where society is is if a if a girl says she doesn't need no man every guy backs up every guy is scared every guy is like nah she's a 
B.I. whatever. Yeah. Right? Not going to say it on here today, but they're, they, 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 they say that. And it's like, bro, like, then what do you bring to the table? Right. What do you have that that uh, complements that type of lifestyle? Mm-hmm. Because if you run into a relationship, right, and this person isn't an entrepreneur, which it could have worked, but if that person is stopping you from progressing, mm-hmm. from continuing your journey, mm-hmm. then why are you doing this, bro? Right. 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 It, it's tough. It is. It's. I feel like it is hard because to some people, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's it's h- how they want the relationship, and that's fine. That's okay. But if you kn- if you s- actively see your girl or your man pushing to be more, and you don't align with that, back off. Let him go. Like, why would you want to be responsible for holding somebody back? They don't align with you. You don't align with them. Just let it go. Yeah, like, oh, we heard this yesterday, Dylan. I think on on Friday. It was a, a podcast we were listening to, and, or it, I think it was actually just a TikTok. And it, I think it went something like, it wasn't that I was better than you. It's just I needed more. Mm. Something like that, right? Like, it, it, some some shit like mm-hmm. that. I don't know. There's a lot of shit we go through. But it's, <laughs> he's still, <laughs> guy forgets. He even forgot what happened yesterday. Uh. But um, it's not that... If this relationship doesn't work, it doesn't mean you weren't for me. Right. And I wasn't for you. It's like, bro, maybe our time wasn't there. Yes. And maybe I'm not the person for you. Yes. Maybe I don't compliment you the way you need me to. Mm-hmm. Right? If I'm a busy person, 24-7, entrepreneur, like, you have to understand, man, I can't be home all the time. Mm-hmm. If you're a 24-7 entrepreneur, they got to understand, you have to be out there doing just that as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. Your business is not going to grow by just sitting on the couch watching Hulu and Netflix yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like, if you're not listening to things that things that progress your, your mentality and your emotional state, yeah. if you're not looking at other competition, and mm-hmm. if you're not out there, mm-hmm. then how the hell is the world going to know who the fuck you are? Exactly. Right? Exactly. And I think it's just a beautiful thing about now is, like, you in order for you to, to be who you are, you got to tell the truth. Yeah. Tell them what your life consists of, mm-hmm. what your schedule consists of, mm-hmm. what you bring to the table. Mm-hmm. And if they can't match that, if they can't compliment that, and if that's an issue, yeah, go away. Yeah. And to be up front, like, right then and there, honestly. Yeah, right? Like, stop honestly, wasting time, stop. bro. Like, man, if you just in it for the Netflix and chill, yeah. <laughs> go away, bro. Yeah. But, and I think so many people are just scared of being denied. Like, they don't want to be denied. And so they hold it off until they can't anymore, and then they build their self up to be like, all right, like, this isn't going to work out. This isn't going to work out. It's like, well, you should have done that, like, two months ago. What are you doing? (laughs) Like, I've been on the same grind forever. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? But I think the denial part is the hardest. It's like, what if this – I like, we're vibing. We're cool. But but what if when I tell him this, they don't like me anymore? Then he's not for you. That's just what it is. And people try to hold on. Yes. God. Talk, oh, talk something. Oh You're like, she's ready for this. Like, yeah. We try to hang on to the things that don't ben- that don't help us out. That are comfortable. That are comfortable. And we try to hold on to things that are drowning us at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. And you, don't, you, you, you do not realize that in the moment because of comfort. I feel like comfort could be your biggest enemy. Mm-hmm. And you don't realize that because you're just going your day to day. You don't want things to change. And then change is scary. A lot of people don't like change. Yeah. And I think that, like, in the midst of, of being comfortable and then the change, that in between is what, like, what really defines people, for yeah. sure. You, you make a, you go out to make a little bit of change and people are just like, nah, man, you're different now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what? Yeah. What's the issue? Yeah, what's the issue? I need to be. Yeah. I need to grow. Yeah. Right? Imagine us being the same way we were 10 years ago. Yeah, and, and a lot of people, they're not friends anymore because they grew. Or, you know, they have different views, so they're not friends anymore. She's and always busy. Yeah, Doesn't she's always up. busy. She never texts me, but she oh, she's on social. <laughs> it's like, what? There he is. There he is. We're going to blame someone himself. here. I know. <laughs> but yeah, like, be, just because just because they don't call you, just because they don't text you, doesn't mean 
they don't fuck with you anymore. Yeah. It just means they're busy building themselves. Yeah. That is it. And honestly, I'm so blessed because my entire circle is that way. My entire circle. I don't sometimes won't talk weeks, three, four days, and I can call and we'll just be, pick up right where we're yeah. back out. And those are the type of people that I need. And yeah. I can talk to like anybody and they'll be like, well, why didn't you call me yesterday? Girl, I was busy. I got three kids and a business. Nah, what do you mean? The question is, why didn't you call me yeah, yesterday? Yeah, huh? Did your phone break? <laughs> <laughs> Did you run out of minutes? Yeah, yeah. What's, uh, what's going on there? <laughs> I may not have all the time in the world, but when I do make time, just make sure you cherish it. Yes. Yes. And make sure, I'll, and I'll make sure I'll do my part and cherish that same way. Yeah. Because I know you're busy. I know I'm busy. So I know the time that we have together, it's going to be a blessing. Yes. Let's not fight the blessing. Let's just keep the blessing. Mm -hmm. God damn, that was a good one. I'm not going to uh -huh. lie. I'm not going to lie. That was uh -huh. good. ¿Está bien, güey? ¿Ya? ¿Ya empezó la verga? No, qué bien. Estamos chileando la verga. Thank you, Dylan. Dylan today, not on camera, but he's is the guy handling the camera. He's behind the scenes. Shout out my guy. He's a little shy today. <laughs> All right. So what, what we're going to be trying to do, like the rest of the episodes throughout our journey this year, 2023, is we're going to try to get interactive with multi, most of you guys asking us really good questions. Not like the dorky ones. I think one of them said, I kiss my teacher. Bro, well, there's no conversation that can happen out of that. But there's this, we're going to start it off with the spicy question that came out. So it does, it, this, this one says, why do guys like pics of provocative women when they're in a serious relationship? <laughs> and you look at me. <laughs> we got to get your type of input, and then I, well, I'll, I'll try to give ours. Honestly, I'm going to be honest. I think they're bored. And I think there that that a conversation, I think the conversation is that you need to have that with your spouse. And a lot of people don't do this. They don't want to do this. Mm. Like have conversations with your spouse on what you can do to spice it up. And I, I think that those conversations are so awkward and a lot of people don't want to do it. But is it awkward because like they don't have that communication with the partner? Or? Exactly. Yes, because they don't have that communication. Huh. What, if, what if your man is like... Tickle me with your toes, and you never knew he liked to be tickled with his toes. I don't know. Like, you don't have those conversations. No, seriously. Or you know what? Buy one of those games where you can be open-ended and have the – and that – that and have, drink some freaking happy dance. And do it in between. <laughs> drink happy dance. That's <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, exactly. It's That's true. right, Jose. It's true. No, it's true. It is true. Yeah, it is true. So I think a lot of times they steer away because that they're in a moment of boredness. But does that cause issues for like? Because like we, the couple, the times that we did throw like these questions out, like actually, like some people were actually mad. Like, oh, my boyfriend or husband shouldn't be liking these girls' pictures because that's cheating. Mm. I don't think so, but oh god, I'm gonna be chewed out. <laughs> I'm gonna be. Should we bring him there? <laughs> I don't think so. Honestly, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> my mindset is that like, is I'm I'm very confident in myself, and 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 our relationship. And if he thinks someone's pretty, like your picture, whatever. I don't care. I'm not gonna lose sleep at it, but. At the same time, I'm like, if he does want to steer away or do something that's not appropriate, <laughs> look what you're losing, bro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep. Yep. I would do that. Yep. No, honestly, though. And that, that shit right, homie. Huh, let me see. Fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> fuck around and find out. <laughs> but honestly, that comes from security and Facts. that comes from... Getting on your self-care days, you know, and finding finding that I am beautiful, I do have worth, and one day I'm going to give somebody everything that they want. Yes. Like, you have to have that inside of yourself in order. And then if you portray insecure, you're going to be insecure in everything you do, your business, your relationships, your whatever uh, that you so do, that's how you're going to portray yourself. This wasn't a question there, but now it, 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 got, it got into my head. Check your partner's phone or don't check it? Don't. Facts. Don't. If you go looking for something, you're going to find it. 
You want to ruin your day? <laughs> Go ahead and look. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> Dude, it's been a conversation this week. Like, we just, like, we were, I was, for whatever show, podcast, like, they were just, like, putting on, I was like, oh, if you want to ruin your day, fuck around and find out. I'm like, oh, shit. All right, a little bit more serious question. Shout out Pepe. He didn't make it today, but he put a question out here. He put, what's one of the challenge the challenge you're facing in your role business and how are you tackling it? Um, honestly, right now, it's, I would definitely say being organized um, in financials as well as staff. And for me, I didn't realize how fast Drip would expand this last year, and it bit me in the ass. Mm-hmm. In a sense that it was like, oh my god, I didn't realize that we were we we're not organized in the hiring process. I didn't realize that we're not organized in filing taxes, like little things like that, where you don't realize that, like, oh shit, it's all hitting me at once. Yeah. And I should have been organized from the get go, but I didn't know. I didn't know how to be organized in these things because all of this happened within the last year to where I was just going and I was just pushing. I was just trying to get business still, still getting business. You know what I mean? And, and finally at the end of the year, I was like, what just happened? Mm -hmm. As opposed to preparing myself before. Mm -hmm. And that going into 2023, like I'm totally prepared. Like whatever's going to hit me if we hit six digits, whatever the case is, I'm prepared for it because of last year. So I think now learning from that, which everybody has to go through this. Everybody does. You don't yeah. start a business and know everything. You don't know, you're not setting yourself up for success. Like, honestly, you have to go through these humps and these hurdles and shit, I should have done this, but let me do it now. And then that's how you grow and that's how you expand within yourself and within your business. Do you feel like at one point you get lucky? Or is it just like your preparation and hard work meaning opportunity? I think there's spurts of luck, but I don't think the whole thing is luck. I think that you might have little opportunities here and there that may or may not be considered luck. Um, But I think as a whole, (laughs) you can't be lucky as a whole. Yeah, you can't can't get that lucky all the time. You can't be that lucky all the time. Uh, Next one, same one from, same guy, Pepe. Shout out, Jose. What is the most important lesson you learned over your career, past or current? Um... I think to be to be authentic to myself is definitely what I've learned. I think that I've been tested to a point where I've wanted to be, pull myself out of my character. Yeah. And I was like, nope, I no, I can't. I can't let this ruin me because this is my business. It's not just me. This is my business. And so I feel like, yeah. Definitely, definitely that. I love that. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the things that we had to learn. I know I had to learn personally. Um, just staying authentic to yourself, no matter if people are fucking with it or not at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Stay true to yourself. And those people that you are trying to attract will come at one point in your life. Mm-hmm. Whether it's right now or later. Like, hey, if you give them now, you don't know what later comes with, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, is this... A lot of this world is, is about fitting in other people's resume and other people's, like, criteria. Yeah. They're not about that anymore. I don't want to fit anybody's criteria or what you think success is or what you think I could be. Mm-hmm. I want to fit what I know what I could be. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. And I think, too, that that's um, – I think a lot of people will disagree when I say this, but honestly, I do business with my heart. And I think a lot of people will disagree and a lot of people that are – on the higher, like, true business men or women, they're like, well, that's probably why you're right where you're at. But for me, like, the vibe, uh, being true to myself and attracting the people who see me for me, those are what le- led me into the opportunities that I have yeah. had in the past. There's a, I just heard it, I think it was yesterday at night, today in the morning, um, some of the most richest people and successful people are the most loneliest. yes. And just because you have a big house doesn't mean it's full. Yeah. It might be empty. Yeah. Right? You can have the biggest house in the block, biggest house in the city, 
But if you have no furniture inside, no paintings, no family portraits, whatever the case is, mm. you may be the loneliest person out there. Yeah. But if you lead with love. Yeah. If you carry your people, if the people you have around you take you with you. Excuse me. It's about, can I enjoy the top with everybody with me? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Whether everybody means two people or everybody means one or everybody means ten. Mm -hmm. Whatever that looks like. Yeah. But can I make an impact in my print here in this world with what I've done? Yeah. And not be that one person that went all the way up and didn't bring nobody back. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know what that, I, mean? that, I don't want to be like that. Yeah. I, one thing is I, I, we never want to. We, I've, I've said it. I never want to be that person that was too good and too big mm -hmm. to forget about where I was. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and and it comes to a cliche part because, like, oh, you changed, bro. Oh, fame got you. Mm -hmm. Nah, man. It's just I knew my energy here wasn't welcomed anymore. Right. I knew the love that I was trying to give here was not appreciated. So now I got to move it over here. Yeah. And maybe you stayed there and you're not here now for a certain reason. Yeah. That's on you. Yeah. I don't hate you. Yeah. I don't love you, yeah. but I got to go. Yep, exactly. Right? Like, people think because you were there when we had nothing, like, you got to bring them with you. Right. Nah, bro, if you're still stuck in back then and that mentality, dude, then yeah. like, we can, bro. Yeah. I'm sorry. You just outgrow people. And a lot of people get ass hurt. Yeah. They, they get ass hurt. Like, why didn't I come to this? Why wasn't I invited to that? It's just like, you just don't feel where I'm at anymore and there's nothing yeah. wrong with you. I don't hate you. I don't I have nothing against you. I don't want to say anything ever bad about you, but you and I are just on different paths and that's okay. That's wow. okay. But a lot of people they don't see it like that. I'm maybe right now you think I'm meant for you. Maybe right now you maybe I'm not for you right now. Mm -hmm. But just don't blame me for moving on. Right. Don't blame me for growing making myself better. Mm -hmm. Blame yourself for not growing with me. Right. Right. Like that's a. The, I think that was one of the things, bro. Like, just be because I'm growing myself. Don't be mad at me because I better myself. Yeah. Be mad at yourself, asking yourself why you're not here with me. Right. It's not my fault you didn't grow. I can't carry your weight. Yeah. I could barely carry mine. Yeah. Right. Like we we're dealing with so much shit behind the scenes that no yeah. one sees. You with being a mom, being an entrepreneur, being yourself. Mm -hmm. There's three parts: entrepreneur, parenthood, and then you. Right. <laughs> Trying to figure all that shit out yourself. And a partner. How do you do that? <laughs> How do you make that work, right? And people yeah. don't understand that. It's like, yo, if you can't fit in those criteria in those sections, hey, don't be mad at me. Mm -hmm. I, I can't take any more. Yeah. My body, my mind, my heart can only take so much. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. That's it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Take it however you want. I'm sorry. Yeah. And that's definitely where I, I've had to been with juggling so many plates. Like, and I And I feel like, too, like for... One of the things that irks me is, like, when people tell me, I know you're too busy, but I'm like, oh, it, it literally is like nails on a chalkboard because, yes, I'm busy, but when things are important to me, I make time for that. You only have time at night or on the weekends or, like, this. <laughs> and? Yeah. Like, bro, like, I'm working. What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like. I would be mad at myself if I had all the free time in the world. Yeah, and when right. a day off looks for us is maybe we don't have work in the morning, but we're out going to the gym. Mm -hmm. We're all trying to catch up on things we need to catch up, yeah. which is content. Mm -hmm. Like we had a day off yesterday, right? And it wasn't a day off. Yeah. We, we cleaned. We fucking washed the truck. We did our content. We edited it for today. We had to do this. Everything that no one else sees, bro. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I don't blame you for not seeing it. I don't care if you understand it. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as I show you, all you're going to say is, damn, you guys do all that? Huh. How do you guys sleep? Yeah. Motherfucker, I sleep three hours, four hours. Yeah. And we do it again. Yep. And we'll do it again continuously. I know one dude that's sitting right here that maybe sleeps three hours after out, out drinking, and he's out in the gym. Oh. He's out <laughs> in the gym. <laughs> not him. Not him. Him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, it's that. And one thing my, my dad has always told me is if you're going to have a night out today and have fun, make sure tomorrow you wake up and you go back to the grind and you mm. don't fuck up your bag. Mm. Don't take that. a don't take a day off because you parted the day before. Fuck that. Don't make an excuse. I love and that. shit, we've gone. Man, I'm not going to be the first. Bro, I've gone to work and I'm just like, damn, why did I get <laughs> up today? I'll crudo. 
Good old little nation. I was like, damn, bro, I feel like shit. And then if we go to the gym at 12 a.m., people are like, damn, bro, how'd you do? Like, how do you do that? Why don't you just go home and sleep? Like, bro, I'm on autopilot. Mm-hmm. It's my mind and my body just speaking to my, my heart, yeah. telling me, yo, I need to do this. Yep. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I do need my sleep. I, I do need my rest. But when I need my rest is when, like, I'm fucking crying already. Yeah. Like, I'm just driving home, like, <laughs> fucking it. song. Oh, my God. This will just end this. I'm like, <laughs> okay. And then I, I, then I just suck it up. I'm like, fuck it. It is what it is. Let's go. Yeah. Let's get up. Mm-hmm. We're blessed, bro. For everybody, like, complaining about the life, bro, you fucking woke up. You woke up. If you're listening mm-hmm. to this message from me and Vanessa right now, you woke up and you have an opportunity to be better and do better. You have a whole other 24 hours to make a difference. And it's up to you how you do it. Yeah. It's pretty up to you. It's up, It's in your fucking hands. It's not your parents. It's not your, not your spouse, mm-hmm. your significant other, your friends. It's, num- it's none of their fault. No. Stop blaming everybody. Yes. Stop blaming Stop every blame single person everybody. in your life. Yeah. Right? Yeah, take responsibility mm-hmm. for your own life and your own actions. Yes. That's it, bro. We can all be out right now and we go have a drink. And if you blame me for you getting in trouble for it, mm. bro, you made a decision. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I guess I feel guilty, but, bro, you did this. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, we've done it. We we had instances, bro, where we just have to make a grown decision. And, all right, let's not drive today. Or yeah. maybe let's not go out today. Mm-hmm. Or maybe let's do this instead. Okay, bro. Maybe that doesn't seem fun to you. Like, yesterday, literally, just a chain of events, it was literally, instead of going out, we're just going to go to the house and bonfire. Yeah. That seemed a lot more better yeah. than going out. Yeah. We had every opportunity to go out. Mm-hmm. We got invited places. And I'm sorry I can't go out. I just chose my peace. Yeah. I'm sorry I can't be out there doing whatever you're doing. I chose my peace. Mm-hmm. I want peace. Mm-hmm. Right? I, people don't understand what peace is inside. No. no. Are you peaceful right now where you're sitting at? Yeah. How'd you get there? God, trial and error, man. Trial and error. I have fucked up <laughs> a lot. I've done things that I'm not proud of. And I've been people who are, I'm not proud of. I've been different phases in my life where I'm like, I don't know her. <laughs> but if I didn't do those things or be that person, then I would not be sitting here with you right now. And I would not have a story. I would not have the kids who love me who can say, hey, mom was there. My mom does go to all my shit. My mom picks me up every day after school. I wouldn't have those kids. And I wouldn't have, you know, a a partner who supports me if I didn't do and be who I was back then. Yeah. So. That's 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 the thing, man. That, oh, man, that's like, that's the part of life where you're just like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm peaceful. And and maybe today I'll do something that I'm going to regret tomorrow. But I got to learn. I got to learn. That's the only way that you continue to grow is by learning in those mistakes because we're yeah. human. We do these things and we can't be punished for every little thing. And that goes back to staying in your own lane. <laughs> we, we can be punished and diminished by everybody else. Yes. We'll take the punishment exactly. from what we did ourselves. Mm-hmm. If we get in trouble, if we did this, did this. I did this, bro. I don't need you to tell me and punish me for that. Yeah. If I did something wrong to you, okay, I'll apologize. Yeah. But if I had nothing to do with you, mm-hmm. and if you have no influence on my life anymore, bro, stay out. Yeah. Right? Like, it's always the people that have no influence in your life. Yeah. I know if the two guys sitting here and then the other ones that, that didn't come today tell me something, I, I can embrace that. I, yeah. um, Bro, you know what? Fuck it. I, mm-hmm. I understand. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. But for the most part... I don't apologize for a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. I, I can't apologize. Yeah. I can't, right? Like, I really can't. I'll tell him. I was like, bro, sorry, but not sorry, bro. This is who I am. This is what I am. I cannot fake who I am. Yeah. Take me for who I am or, and hate me for who I'm not. Yeah. You take that. Mm-hmm. If you can fuck with me, fuck with me. And if you can't, stay on that side, bro. But don't come the next day and try to show me some fake love and shake my hand. I yeah. can't, bro. I, can, I personally mm-hmm. can't do that. Yeah. If I love you, I'll, I'll, I'll hug you. Mm-hmm. And if I don't care about you, I just know I can't do that. Mm-hmm. I can't give you that little side hug. Yeah. I can't give you that little, a little oh, nudge. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what's up, bro? <laughs> Not even looking at each other. What's up? Bro? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hell no, nah, bro. I wanna, I wanna feel the energy. I wanna embrace that. Yeah. And um, same. it's just life. I'm sorry I can't be there, but I'm working on me. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry you feel that way, but I'm working on me. Mm-hmm. 
I'm sorry you see life like this, but I just don't anymore. Yeah. Don't blame me. Don't okay. hate me. It's okay. It's okay. There's a, this one of the last questions that we have is, it's a good one. I think this one, man. I'm scared. What would you do if everything that you have going on will end tomorrow? Mm, God. That's a good one. Huh? I honestly, I can't even imagine. It's so hard for me to switch my life because I've thought about that. Uh Like, you know, in your first year in business, like that's when you're really pushed. That's when you sometimes hit rock bottom three, four times. And you're like, shit, what if I just close down? What if drip doesn't last? What if drip doesn't last? And I think about that. And for me, I'm like, no, this shit's lasting. (laughs) It's going to keep going. But I, I, I honestly, I don't know. I, I don't have an answer because I honestly can't even put my mind to that because I've just been like, I want to just, I want to make this what it is and make it big and make it more than just IVs. Yeah. So I, it's so hard for me to put my mind there. It really is. Have, have you at one point, like, told your dad or your mom, like, thank you or anything like that? Or like, I love you. Thank you so much for pushing me the way you did. No. You know what would be crazy? If you call your dad and you do it. <laughs> right now? <laughs> right now. Should I? Yeah, I think it would be amazing. I think it would be an amazing part. Okay. But you got to put, like, the phone on, on, on the mic. We got to hear this. Okay. Let me see the answers. One or the other, because I know you talked heavily about your dad, man. Oh, man. You got to put it on the They're busy. <laughs> my dad's also really bad at answering his phone, but I can call my stepmom. She answers all the time. Oh, Lord. I was thinking about you this morning. Were you? Yes. I have you on speakerphone, and we are in the car. Oh, great. But I was totally thinking about you. So no F words, okay? No F words. Okay, no F words. Well, I I actually just, um, I was actually calling you because Hmm. I'm I'm on a podcast right now. And so you guys are, you're you're here with me. Oh, that's terrific. But I actually, something came to light and I, I need to tell you something. Okay. So first, um, okay, first, I want to just... sit down. Okay, sit down, Dad. Yes, go ahead. My heart is racing. So first, um, I don't know if I've ever called you and, and, um, and told you thank you. Thank you for what? Thank you for pushing me to be who I am. Thank you for never letting me settle. And thank you for being the best girl dad ever. The OG girl dad. I don't think that I would be where I'm at today if you didn't push me the way that you did. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you. And there's so much more to go. So much more to go. So much more blessings to have. Amen. Amen. That's very nice and thoughtful of you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted to call you that quick. I'll call you uh, later on today so you can tell me why you're thinking about me so much. Okay, sounds great. <laughs> Okay, I'll, right, I'll, I'll call, call you, you later. Okay, bye, okay, Dad. Have fun. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs> 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 you did. You're all late to the party, my guy. No. Call it, the glab squad. I, I know. Call, call it back, bro. Oh, my God. My heart was, like, racing. My son. My son. 
I think there was like 10 rings on there. Like, we're like, all right. Dude, that was a lot. He has a Samsung, huh? It was the last one before. Oh, my <laughs> this God. Guy. That was the longest ring of my life. Oh, man. How do you feel now? I'm like, Twilight, am I floating? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Hey, that just came to head. I was like, yo, this. I think this is going to be. I didn't think he one. was going to answer because my dad is so bad at answering the phone. Literally, really bad. And he'll always call back when he's in the car and he's in the car. Isn't it funny? You call him and then an hour later, yo, what happened? You call me? Uh, what yeah, the Never mind. <laughs> um, I was only stranded on the freeway for like a whole hour, but yeah. never mind. Forget yeah. me, huh? Yeah, seriously. Wow. Yeah, that was. I don't think I've ever done that. I think the the best way to to end this this amazing <laughs> amazing podcast, this amazing show, is leave us with a quote, a phrase, something that you can tell a younger self, and technically speaking to your daughter. Yeah. About life. Um, definitely just embrace life every single day. The problems that we think are problems are life changing. They're actually just minor. They're speed bumps and they're actually going to make us grow. And I know in, in the midst of, of things happening to us, we think it's the end of the world. We think that there's no tomorrow, but to acknowledge that you're actually learning in that moment, it takes a lot. It takes a lot for a person, and that's what I would want for for my daughter or for anybody is to to embrace the hiccups. You get a flat tire, laugh about it. If you, I don't know, if something extreme happens in your life, find the joy in it. And whether it's uh, life or death, you know, like what did that person do to impact my life? Find the joy in the moments that feel like they're tough for us. I like that, bro. This has been an amazing podcast. I want to thank you so much for even like getting the courage and allowing us to be a part of that moment of you calling your dad for the first <laughs> for the first time in time. Thank that. you. Um, drip IV. Find it in Long Beach, find it in Chino Hills, South Made Chino Hills, South Made West Covina. Yeah. And man, is there something 2023 that we can get an insight to that was happening? <laughs> yeah. So 2023 is, is going to be big for us. Um, we're looking at expanding nationwide and being in other states and starting the process of manufacturing our own products. So, mm, ooh, talk to him heavy. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you speak about it, then we do it. Yes. Right? That's we're true. manifesting, manifesting this shit to the, to the future. So, I want to thank you. I want everybody make sure you subscribe, you follow Drip IV, Vanessa, subscribe to the page, to the, everything we have YouTube, IG, TikTok, everywhere we're at. Social Life Podcast. You already know how we do, baby. Woo.